Uh, so far, if you have noticed that we have been dealing with TCP. Uh, all the sockets we create has always been TCP sockets. Right? And then the functions we use are also TCP, TCP related. For example, we create a socket, we create a TCP socket, and then we connect, and then we actually uh, read and write data too. On the server side, we also create a TCP socket, we bind, we listen, we accept. All these things are basically TCP uh, related functions. Right? As you know, in the, in the transport layer, there are two protocols, the UDP and the TCP. Right? So in this particular chapter, we're going to look at how we can use UDP sockets, UDP sockets to communicate between client and server. So there's another alternative for us to use. Right? That, that's, that's what it's all about. So before we go further into UDP, let's take a compare between UDP and TCP. Right? So, but basically, is that UDP is a simpler version of the protocol of the TCP. Right? So you allow two alternatives. So UDP is a simpler version, simpler protocol to communicate between client and server. The main thing is that to notice is that UDP is basically connectionless. It means that it just sends data to the other side. It does not check whether the server or the client is available or ready. It doesn't care. Right? So you don't. So it is. We call it, we call it the connectionless. You send the data without checking. You have data. You just send it. And if if the other side is alive, it will reply you. Not means you just wait continuously. Right. And the other thing is that it does not have flow control. It doesn't have congestion control, it doesn't have error control, all these things. So flow control is another one. That means there's no streamlining between what the client sends and what the server can receive. If the, if the, clients, if the server sends too much, too fast, then the server might not be able to cope. Right? That's what it's all about. So again, UDP does not handle all these things. And at the same time, UDP is unreliable. In a sense, because now there's no error control, if the packets get lost or the server is not alive, the client would not know. Right? So we do not know whether the data gets true and if it gets true, whether, it's correct, whether it gets correctly or not. So there's another characteristic of UDP. So although we can, there are errors generated on UDP sockets, the trouble is that errors will not be uh, obtained. Right, you cannot acquire or you cannot uh, read, the, read the, uh, the errors from the socket itself. So although the, the errors will be generated, but you cannot pick it out. It will not report it back to your client or server. Right? So we call this asynchronous errors. Errors are there, but it's not collected. Now, for example, you, you send something to the UDP, the, the server is not alive. So there's error generated. But then the UDP does not have the facility to actually check where the error occurred. Right? So it doesn't do all these things. So in other words, the UDP is, is very, very primitive, very, very simple. So if you want to use UDP sockets, you want to use UDP to, to communicate between client and server, then you must realize all these drawbacks. You must understand that these are the restrictions or these are the capabilities of the UDP. So, so UDP can, doesn't handle all these things. That means your program now must handle all these things. Right? If you use TCP, TCP automatically does all these things in the background. But UDP doesn't do that. So if you want to use UDP, then make sure your program actually handle all these particular situations. The, the main thing about this is that UDP is simple to use, as we will see the, see the, see the later. It's not complicated. So UDP is quite commonly used in DNS domain name system, and then used in NFS, network file system, SNMP, short, uh, what is it, uh, network management protocol, simple network management protocol. Right. So basically we use this for simple, simple things where the server needs to keep in touch with the client, or the client needs to keep in touch with the server, but if the data does not get through, never mind, it's, it's no big deal. Right. It's not critical in that sense. Right? So we must realize that these are the capabilities of UDP. 
So with that in mind, then we design our programs accordingly. So for client-server applications, the flow is more or less similar. The only thing is now, if you notice this, if you compare this diagram with the TCP client-server fun uh, functions, right? The main thing you will notice that, so here in, 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 in UDPs, we use, for example, on the server side, we create a socket. Then we will create a socket, and then the struct socket structure will be assigned to a port number and the IP address. Then we bind the port address to the socket structure. After that, we straight away go and start to receive data from the client. Receive data and then send data to the client. On the client side, we create a socket. Once the socket is created, we straight away are able to send data to the server and able to receive data from the server. So you will notice that if you compare this diagram with the TCP client server diagram, you will notice that on the server side, in TCP, you have socket, you have bind, you have listen. Right? They will listen, they will be accept. So these two functions are missing from the UDP side. And on the client side of TCP, you will have socket, then you have a connect. Right? So here, there's no connect. So that's one difference. Second difference is you notice in the, the sending and receiving data from client or server. Earlier, we used read and write, right? two functions, right? read, read and write. Here in the UDP, we don't use read and write, we use receive from and send to. Right? Send to means you send data to the other side, receive from means you receive data from the other side. Right? So these are the main differences when we use UDP socket for communication. So let's take a look at the two, the, the two new functions used by UDP, the send from, the send to and receive from. So let's look, look through the parameters. Right? For example, let's say send to. So first of all, we will, we will in include the socket which we have created, the UDP socket. Then we also, the second parameter will be the buffer. Remember, we are trying to send data to the other side. So where is the data currently? It's in the buffer. Right? So in the buffer, this is data in the buffer which we want to send to the other side. Then this will be the size of the buffer itself. How much data do we have in the buffer? How many bytes? Then there are some flags for control. Then there is a socket structure and also the socket structure length, the size of it. Right. Receiving side, same thing, the socket which we have created and this will be the address, this is the buffer where, we, where we're going to receive the data from the socket and we'll put the data into this buffer. Then the n bytes will be how, how many bytes will be, is, is read from the socket and goes into here, the flag same thing, the socket structure and also the socket length. So this socket structure here is the one which you are sending to, right? Uh, sorry, uh, which you are going to receive from. So the socket socket structure will also be passed from the other side, right? So in other words, if you go back to the diagram earlier, right? So we have let's say the client sends data to the server. The the client will use send to. So when you send to it creates a socket, this socket will be given to here. Right? Then you're going to send some data. Where's the data? It's in the buffer. So the buffer will also be as a parameter to this particular uh, function. Then the socket structure which we create here will also be put as a parameter to the send to. Right? And, the, and the length and all these things. So when it goes here to the server side, the server will be using receive from to read the data from the socket. Right, so data will be read from the socket and then put into a buffer. Then it will also receive the socket which socket structure which you sent earlier from there. Right? The socket structure, what does socket structure contain? It will be the one here. It contains the IP address of the other machine, the port address, and the family type. Right? So this will, will be sent together with the data. Right? So this is quite different from TCP earlier. 
Right? So, so we need to send more data now. Right? Earlier, if you compare this with read, read, and, read, read and write, right? for example, uh, send to is equivalent to write. So earlier in send to, in, in, in the write function for TCP, we only have the socket uh, we created, the buffer, and we'll, we only will have the size. We don't have all these things. Now another difference is that if you use receive from and send to using UDP sockets, we can also send or receive zero bytes. And that means we can send something, empty buffer to the other side. No data. It's still allowed under UDP. In TCP, it's not. You must send at least one byte. So TCP, you create a, create a buffer, create a uh, socket, and then I just send an empty buffer. Right. It's allowed. So data of zero bytes is acceptable. Right. So UDP packets, right, the data part of it, then when you send, it will put a UDP header, which is eight bytes. Then you pass it on to the network layer. Network layer will put in the IP header, another 20, 20 bytes. So the, the total length might of, the, of the empty buffer will be only 28, 28 bytes. Right? And because no data here. Right? And this is allowed. So we just send a header, header, but no data at all. Right? So again, this is, it can be used as a response. I send you something, you send me empty buffer back. Right? It could be a way of acknowledging. Right? To say that, okay, you have received. You just send me an empty buffer back, I know that you have received something. Right? So that's how UDP can be used. Now let's, let's take a look at the same example we've used earlier, the echo server. Right? In this case, now we're going to use UDP sockets right? to communicate between the echo server and the echo client. So our diagram more or less remains the same. We will, the client will still get the data from the user, from the command line, take the line from there, and then it will send that particular line to the server, the server will be waiting for data to come from the client. Once you get that, it will just reply back the same data to the, to the client. The client, after, after sending the data, it will be continuously waiting for the response from the server. Once you get a response from the server, it will display that particular line to the monitor, right? to the output, standard output. So the function, the, slow, the flow is the same. The only difference now is that here, we use send to on the client side send to and receive from and on the server side we use receive from and send to we don't use read, read and write anymore right? that's the main difference here so let's take an example here UDP server version 1 so again the first thing we create a socket now notice how we create a socket this, this is a family type AFINet means it's IPv4 the second argument, second parameter is the SOC D-gram, right? So it's different, right? So that means this is basically what we are doing for datagram. I mean, this is a UDP socket we are creating, okay? So we create, we create a UDP socket this way. Then we create a socket structure. We put the information into it as normally. We initialize the socket structure first, zeros. The family is AFINet. The address, the IP address is the IP address. Uh, this is the server. So, okay, we take any address assigned to the server. And the port number we put into the, into the socket, uh, into the structure. Right? We convert it first into the into a network. Right? So, we assign the port number to the socket structure. Now we, we bind the socket structure to the socket, which we the, 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 the UDP socket we have created earlier. After that, we just wait for messages coming in from the client. So we straight away run DG echo, right? the echo, echo function. So in echo function, we pass the socket, we pass the, uh, we create another socket address, Socket structure for client, and then pass that, and also the size of it. Right? So the thing missing here is that now there's no listen. We do not listen anymore. 
And if you look at your DG echo, we will also not accept. So there's no accept function. And so DG echo, basically what it does, it goes in a for loop, and then it just runs. Receive from, right? Receive from the socket, the message, whatever it comes, what's the maximum of it? This is the client socket structure. Get the data from the client we sent, put into this buffer. After that, send the same buffer back to the client, right? So receive from, send to, right? We just we do, do that way. And we go this uh, in, in a loop, right? So on the client side, same thing, we will create a socket, we create a socket. Again, it must be socket, it must be UDP socket. This will be creating a socket structure. Again, assign the values to the socket structure. Uh, family type, port number, and also the service address. Service address we obtain from the, from the user. Right? Then we go straight away call the DG client uh, function. Right? So DG client function, again, very simple. So if you go back earlier, the DG client function will basically do on this, right? It basically will get input from the user, send the data to server, after that wait for reply, and then display the reply from the server. And that's what the DG client will do, right? So again, first we get data from the user. Once we get data that is, we send it to the socket, pass the socket structure also, the server address. After that, we wait for the reply from the server, and once we get the reply from the server, which will be in the buffer called receive line, then we display the receive line to the standard output. Right? So the sequence is the same. Only thing now is that we use we use send to and receive from, and certain TCP functions are related to TCP sockets, which we are not using anymore. Right? That's the main thing. So let me show you this particular version. Right, so we run the we run the UDP uh, server version. Right, server running. Let's run the client now. Right, again, same thing, we, are, we supply the IP address. Right, so we type in something. We should get reply back, right? We can set up another another client. So now, so the thing is running, right? So the server and the client is running. Now let's say we, okay, uh, all right, so let's say we, we stop the server, right? So the, the UDP server is stopped. So what happened? No news yet, right? Both clients are not aware that the server is dead, okay? I send another message. The client, the UDP client, sent a message to the server. What is he doing? What is the sub, What is the client doing? He sent a message, and is of course no reply. But what what, what the client is doing? Client sent a message to the server, and. Client send a message to the server. 
So the client sent a message to the server. Now it's what you're doing. It's basically waiting. Waiting for reply from the server. Right? And the reply, of course, is not coming because the server is dead. But the thing is that now, how long does it wait? Right? This server also type something, no reply. But there's, there is no, it still keeps waiting. Right? Earlier, if you remember, if you do the same thing for the TCP sockets, if your server is down, right, you run a client the server, you, if the server is down, the, the moment your client when sends one line, it will know. Right? It's termination, uh, terminate, connection terminated uh, prematurely, it will tell you. But now, there is no response. So you wait and wait and wait. How long you wait, we don't know. Right? It depends how, 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 how long is the, uh, the socket and all that. Uh, for example, you might try for two hours or three hours or whatever, after that, you will give up. Right? So one thing is that now, so using UDP is not aware that the other side is dead or is not alive anymore. Right? So this is the main thing. Okay, let's try one more time. Another thing. Stop this. Now I start so now there's no server running, right? Now I start a client again. UDP client. I start a UDP client, okay. I I type Oops. Wrong spelling. It doesn't matter, the server is not alive anyway. So, no server running, I start a client, I send a message. Again, the server is waiting indefinitely. I'm oh, sorry, the client is waiting indefinitely. Why? Because there's no checking, right? Remember, say with UDP is unreliable, it does not check whether the other side is ready or not, whether the other side is running or not, before it sends data. It just creates a socket, sends data to the other side without checking whether the peer or the server is actually available. Right? So you just send and you wait and wait and wait. Right? So let's compare the previous version of TCP server which we had. So earlier, our, our TCP servers which we have when the clients makes a TCP connection with the server. Right? And then what the server will do, there is a listening port. Rather list there is a yeah, there's a listening port on the a listening socket created on the TCP server, which which will will we see incoming uh, client TCP client connections. So what the listening port will do, it will create it will fork a child process and the child process will continue communication with the client. Right? We saw that earlier. Another TCP connection comes in, the server will fork another process, this, the child process, and that child process will communicate with the, the other client. Right? In UDP, there's no such thing. Right? UDP, there's only one socket. The server is running UDP service. There's no such thing checking and all that. A client sends a UDP data, datagram to it. It will just receive it and pass for the server to do. Right? If you get something, you will send it there. Right? It will not create child process and it will also not check and all these things. It does not create... So that if you notice that, there's no listening port. There's no listening socket on the UDP server. There's only one socket which we create. Right? So there's no multiple sockets uh, available here now. Right? So each, all the multiple servers on UDP, uh, sorry, all multiple clients on the UDP will use the same socket on the server. Right, so we do not have, here we have separate, uh, uh, a one-to-one -one socket connection between a client and a server. Now the client comes in, they have their own socket connection. In UDP, no, they all share the same one socket only. Right. Okay. Now, so, in the, so, in, so if this is the case, that means anyone sending data to, to the server using UDP, UDP will just accept it and then reply, what, what whatever it's supposed to do, right? without checking whether is the other side is actually connected or not, or whether it's alive or not, and no, no such thing. 
right? So the main thing is that main thing happens is because there is no uh, handshaking between the client and server, right? It just sends data blindly. Now there's a possibility of the UDP being compromised. Right? For example, like this case, let's go back to this, this case here. Let me just draw it out first. So we have, let's say, UDP client right server another client so when this client sends something to here the server will reply right send something to here it will reply right so many things that can the two mix up or not Meaning that this client sends something to the data, but the server somehow send it back to somewhere else. Or there could be another sorry. Or there could be there could be another case. Let's say now when a client sends data to the server, the server will wait, let's say for 10 seconds, then reply. Right? So client send data here to the server. The server will wait for 10 seconds. Then it's supposed to reply. So let's say this scenario. We have another another UDP server running. So what the server does what the server does is that once A client send the UDP data to the server. It will also this particular server will, is like uh, is like monitoring the traffic, right? Pa packet uh, sniffer. So you, you will also get the data and it will reply back. Right? So and then the the reply from this will come later. But by that time, the other server has already sent something. And the, the, the point is that this client, after it's sending data to the server, it will wait for the reply. And the reply comes to the UDP, it comes to the same, same UDP socket. If it comes to the UDP socket, it will read it. But the thing is that it, it does not know who is it coming from. It does not check who is it coming from. So I send some data to someone, but someone else quickly reply. I think that the client will think that the reply is coming from here, but it could be from someone else. Right? Because it does not check, it does not know who the server is. Right? So to overcome that, one way would be to verify the incoming responses. That means what we want to do is that the UDP client, once he sends the data, and then once he gets the reply, it will compare. Compare the socket structure you send and the socket structure you receive. Because this, when you send the data, the socket structure will contain the IP address and the port number of the server, the other side. And then when it comes back, you look at the socket structure, it will tell you where you're coming from, which IP number and which port number. So they should match. If it's match, then we know we are, we are receiving a response from the correct server. Right? So this is what this this is what uh, this, this particular program is trying to do. Right? So to make sure that the client receives reply from the same server it earlier sent a message to. Right? So earlier, let's look at the, the, the our DG client earlier. It gets the data from the user, sends the data to the server, right, to the socket, and this is our server address, right? Who are we are sending to? Socket structure, which contains our server address. Where is it coming from? It's coming from earlier, the main program. The main program 
the server address, that's why we put in our our IP number for the IP number for the server you put in it, into the structure and then we send the structure, the server address structure to the DG client. So this will contain the the port number and IP number IP address of the server we are sending the data to. Right, so we get that, so we'll know this is the server we are sending to. So once we get the receive from, then we will get the data in, in our buffer. At the same time, the socket structure will be that's available. So this socket structure now, which is from the receive from, is the socket structure of the reply from the other side. Means that this is a socket structure which is given to you. All right? So in this case, what we do is that not only we send message, so we send message and we send the, the socket structure also. Right? So when, when you receive, you receive the message and you also receive the, the socket address. So what you can do is you compare this with this. Right? So the one we sent and the one we received reply address. So this particular function, what you try to do is that it's a bit, uh, a bit complicated, but the main thing is that it compares, right? This is a, a C function memory compare. It takes the server address, this particular um, structure, and then compare with the reply structure and see whether it is zero or not. If both these things are equal, then it will be a, a zero. The memory compare will give us a zero, meaning that these two are equal. So if it's not equal, not zero means that something's wrong. They're not the same, right? So that means something is, something is different inside there. Either IP number is not the same, or the port number is not the same, or both are not the same, right? So if not the same, then it will ignore. It will just say uh, reply from message is ignored, and then it will not display on the screen. It will go back and wait for, and try to send again the data to the server, right? Right, so we run the same server, but this time we're going to run the different client, right? A client which checks the returning address, returning socket structure. So we're going to use this, the DG. We're going to use a different uh, DG client function. So again, we check. So now it gives us reply from this is ignored, right? The thing is that now we are sending data to 127001, right? The reply is coming from 127001, coming from same IP address. Which port we are sending to, we can check here. Uh, We are sending 49152. Oh, sorry. Oh, that, now you see that there's a problem here, right? If you look at this, we do not see any listening port because the listening service is not started on the, by U UDP. And it does not show you a, a connected connection. This listening is something else. This is, this is default on the Mac, so don't worry about that. There's no, no one with the 127.0.1.1. Right, so now the thing is that we cannot check. Uh, hold on. But the IP number, the server, what, what is the port number of the server we started? Uh, What is the port number we, we started with the server? Let's check the... Um, 
we use we use server port, right? This one, S B S E R B P O R T for the server, and then for the client, we also use the same one, right? The server port, I think, is defined in unp.h. And so if we check, can anybody check that? Check what's the IP number for this one. Should be under library. Right, so anyway, so it's, it's 97.9877, right? So we're using port number 9877, okay. So we're sending data to 9877, and the reply comes from 9877. We're sending data to 127001. We're getting data from 127001, but it is ignored. It says it's not same. Anyway, the main thing is that this particular program is something wrong with it, right? We send data to the server. IP number, port number, when it comes back from the same port, from the same server, same IP number, same port number, but somehow this particular program does not give you a proper comparison. So in other words, there's something wrong here. Right, so this, so there's something wrong with this particular program. Right, so what I've done is to actually find a, 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 to correct this one. So let me run the corrected version then. So I will stop this. I'll show you afterwards. So the, the, the function given in the, in the book, there is something wrong with it, it does not work properly. So if I run my corrected version, oops. I should run the server first. So I run the UDP server, now I run my corrected version. Right, so I start there. Right, so now I get it. Right, so now if that means this particular program is actually checking the return. IP address and port number. It compares what is sent and what is received. If it's same, it will display. If not, it will show you it's wrong. But in this case, it's very difficult to test wrong because we are sending to the same machine, right? So this corrected version is available. You can do it from here. I have put here. You go into your into your uh, e-learning. Download this particular file. Right, so this will have the corrected version. Then you use that to do it. Right. Yeah. Let me see.
Okay, so this is the correct version. It's not much difference. The only thing is that what I've done is I put in one statement here. So earlier we were comparing, we were comparing directly between, uh, we were comparing directly between this and this, right? These structures. So what I've done is don't don't compare these two structures. In fact, compare. I do something else. That means take the server address and then use this function. Remember the sock socket and top is basically to obtain to extract out the IP number and port number from the socket structure. Right. So the IP number port number will be extracted out from the server address and put into this buffer. Then I do the same thing for the reply, right? From the reply which is coming from the server, do the same thing, put into another buffer, then compare these two buffers now. Right? So compare this and this. And this seems to be this seems to work. It doesn't matter if you don't understand. Right? The main thing is that the main thing is that it, is that uh, the clients better for it to compare the IP number and port number of the server you're receiving data from. You send data to, a, to a, a server with IP number and port number. When you receive reply, make sure the same IP number and port number is, is you're getting the data from. That's the thing. Right? Because the, the main thing is that UDP does not check that thing. There's a possibility of someone else sending you data. In TCP, there's no way it can happen. Right? But UTP is possibly happen, so we need to check. we need to do this thing. Okay. Right, you can try this later, right? So that's okay. Now, that thing is good. We are checking the IP number. So what we're doing is that we are checking the IP number and the port number of the things, right? So we what we are doing is that IP number and port number we're checking with here, what is coming back. Right? So the client when you send data to the to the server, you will put in the socket structure, the IP number and port number. When it comes back, the socket structure we also check the IP number and port number, see whether these two is are the same or not. By that they should be the same. If not, then it's data is coming from somewhere else. Now the thing is that now what happens is that we are checking the IP number. Right? There's a possibility that this might also not work for a special case like this, so-called multi-homed servers. Multi-home servers basically means that one, one server might have multiple IP addresses. Right? So you have IP1 and IP2. Right? Servers normally do that. You can have, have uh, uh, servers like web servers and all these things have multiple IP addresses. They refer to the same machine. Right? So if that's the case, when you date, send data from the client, you send to one IP number and port number. Right? You send it here. But when you reply, the server replies, it might send you the other one, the other IP number. Because as far as server is concerned, they're both the same. Right? So normally there's one, there's one IP number which is default. Right? So out of these two IP numbers, one is default. But it has two. So if our, our client sends the data to the first IP number, then the server will reply a default IP number. If our client sends data to the IP number two, which is already default, then the server will reply back the same one, it's a default. Right? But the possibility is that in multi homed servers, the reply might come from a different IP number, although they're coming from the same server. Right? So UTP reply may not originate from the address specified by client. So non primary number, that's why it is. So this is allowed because, again, if you're using the, especially when we use the any address. So the solution will be that. We don't check, one possibility is we don't check IP numbers, compare IP number of sending and IP number receiving. We shouldn't do that. 
because the possibility of IP numbers may be the same. So one way to use is to use a, use a server name, the, do, the domain name. So domain name normally will be only one, one domain name. Right. So that's one. But to do that, then we probably have to use DNS. Right. That's another thing. Right. So the other option is that we can do is to check Right? So UDP server can create one socket for every one of its IP addresses. So that means the server now will create you. Since the server might have two addresses, it will create two UDP sockets. So whichever client is connecting to either one of them, it will reply and send back on the same socket. Right? Same IP, IP number. Right? So it gets slightly more complicated. Okay. Anyway, this is just to show you that what we're looking at is basically the problems faced by if you use UDP connection. Right? This, is, this is the main thing you must understand. Earlier, we, we handled this, this problem with the TCP at all. So once you start using UDP, you, will get, you might get into trouble or you might get into get problems related to this. So then we must, find, we must be aware that these problems might exist, might come up. And we must find a way to, we must write our own program, our own routines to handle those situations. Right? That's, that's the main thing you must understand. So if we run the server, right? Server is not running. We run the client. We saw that earlier, the client wouldn't know. The client has no way of checking. Because the client does not check if the server is running, you just send the data and then wait for reply. Right? So the thing is that, once the server, once the client sends the data to the server, but the server does not exist, normally the, the socket will tell you there's an error, right? But the thing is that the client does not know the error because it does not check for those errors. So errors are not reported in UDP, right? So although the port unreachable or the, or the, or the, or the server unreachable errors has been generated, but they are not returned to the client process. Right? Because this is again, is the drawback of UDP. So the asynchronous error is not written to UDP, right? unless we do something about it. So what, how we can overcome this is that, so this is a client connection. And so before we go into that, now this is a UDP client server connection from the client side, right? So what the client does is to create a socket, right? Once you create a socket, then it will create a socket structure, put the port number uh, from the client side, it will, port number will be automatically assigned, and the client IP address will be, will be again selected automatically. From the, to send the data to the server, then you will specify the port number of the server, and specify the IP address of the port, uh, specify IP address of the server, put into the structure, and then you send to for the data, right? And on the server side, server side first it will create a socket, and then the socket structure will be created. We put the server's, IP, server's uh, port number and uh, IP address into the structure, and then bind it. So now it's waiting for connections coming in from the clients. So once the client packet comes in, it will contain the socket structure, which is, contains the client's port address and the IP address. So this will be, can be obtained using the receive from, as we saw earlier. So if you look at the bottom here, so the information available to server from the IP arriving packet. So in the UDP server, the source IP address, source port number are available in the receive from function, right? In a TCP server, if you use a TCP socket, then this thing is available in the accept. So since we're not using accept, we, this information is only available in the receive from, right? Destination, we can use the got sock name or the other message to do that. We'll see that later. Right. Now, one way to make our DG client, uh, sorry, our our UDP client slightly better is to use a connect function with UDP. Right. 
So that means now we can create a, a UDP socket and then we call a connect function. So what a connect function will do, it will basically try to establish connection with the server. But this connect function with UDP is different from a connect function with TCP. If you remember the TCP socket connect, connect function is a handshaking, a three-way handshake. Right? That's where they exchange the IP addresses and all these things and then they will establish a socket. In, for UDP, the connect function, there's no handshaking. What it does is that it will just try to check whether the other side is alive. Right? See whether the other side is actually available. If the other side is alive, the machine is running, then OK. Otherwise, it will tell you no. That's all it does. There's no handshaking at all. At all. So kernel basically checks for immediate errors like host unreachable. And next thing it does is that it will record the IP address and port number of the peer. And then the IP number and port number will be, will be related or bind to the socket itself now. Right? So that's the second difference. So now the connected socket, connected so UDP socket, we do not have to specify the destination IP address and port number when sending data. So now we use the original write functions. We can use the write functions to send data and read function to receive data. So although we're using UDP protocol, but we don't use the send to and receive from anymore because this is a connected UDP socket. We use the, the one, same one we use for TCP, the send and read. And whatever errors occur in the socket will be shown to the client, which will be shown to the users, right? And this can be called multiple times. So the connect can be called multiple times to specify new IP address and port number, or also to unconnect socket. So once we connect connected the socket, we can call the same function again, it will disconnect, right? If you set the, set the uh, family as unspecified, All right? So look at look at this table at the, at the bottom. So if you use the TCP sockets, we use read and write, right? And for UDP socket unconnected, we don't use that. We cannot use read and write. We will only use send to, which we specify destination, right? For UDP socket which is connected is something similar as the TCP socket. Right? We will use write or we will use, uh, we do not specify the destination anymore. Right? We do not specify the IP address anymore. Earlier when we used the UDP uh, 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 function to send and receive, we must specify the IP address of the other side and port number, so here we don't. So this is what the connected UDP looks like, right? So when there is a UDP socket is trying to uh, make a connection with the with the server. So what the server will do, it will so the, the message will go here, and the server what it will do, it will store the IP address and the port number from the connect function. It will store and assign it to a the socket address, right? So next time we use a socket address, it will know which IP number and which port number to go to, right? And the other thing is that once connected, now any other UDP packets coming in from some other servers or IP address or port numbers, you will just ignore because this was not saved earlier, right? So only those one which is connected to will be working. So this, so slight change in our client side. So in the server, there's no difference. So it's only on the server side. So in the server side, our DG client function slightly changed now. Before we get the data, we, go, we try to send the data to the server, we, we connect the socket first. So we create, a, we create a UDP socket, same things. Now we run a connect function and say, this is the server which we want to connect to. Again, the server's IP address and port number will be here. After that, then we get a line from the user. Then we use the write function. Now. We don't use send to. A write function, we just say socket address on the socket ID, the buffer, 
and then the length of the buffer. That's it. We don't send the, the socket structure anymore. Right? And so then we write, then we use the read function. So the difference is that we use read and write. And we use a, a, call, a, a connect function. Right? Right? So we get a rep reply. Okay, so it works fine. So let's try again, same thing. So now our server is not running, and we try to run the, this version of the client, which have a connect function. Server is not running, we run a client version, it runs up, we key in something, we send the data, it says we get error, connection refused. Right? You compare this to the earlier version. If we just use the UDP only, we send data, server is not running, no reply. Right? And it will keep waiting here. But the, the UDP client with the connect function, then it will immediately know, immediately know. The moment you try to send this data to the server, the server is not running, the error is reported, and the error is shown to the user. Here, in the original UDP client, the same thing happens. This data is sent to the server. There's no server there. There's error reported by the TCP layer, but the error is not detected by the, or rather the error is not returned to the client program. Right? So if you use connect function, it will check. Right? So that's a good thing about this. Right, so now let's run the server again. Now I run the client again, this client. So I send something. It's OK. Now I stop the client. Oh, sorry, stop the server. So the client does not know if the server has gone down. But when you try to send something, it will realize. Right, so it's becoming quite similar to the TCP uh, client. Not exactly, but a little bit closer. Right. right? So there's so the connect function basically does is that it will check. It will check whether the other side is ready or not, is, is, is alive or not. The moment it's not alive, the error is reported and the error is actually captured by the client and it's shown to the client. Right? So this is basically the same thing, right? So if we send to the server, the server is not running, then we will say that the connection refuse or read error, right? So the error is basically being captured. Okay. Shall we continue or stop? Huh? Stop? Okay, we'll stop. I think you have too much of it. Okay, so we'll stop here. You can try the, ex try the some of the exercises at the back. Not all of them today, but the one which we have done. Right, so you can try. So you can try until here, all right? One, two, three, the first three you can do. And say this is the one I'm saying earlier, the DigiClient given here, it contains some error. It does not work properly. So use the version which I have corrected. So download it from e-learning and then compile it. Right? So try to do this. Okay.